Today we're going to be talking about the HairWorks authoring pipeline and in regards to that what your workflow looks like going from Maya or 3ds Max to the HairWorks viewer where you can tune and iterate on your asset in real time and get results pretty quick. What we're looking at here is the Mandelodon. This is an asset that exists both in Maya and 3ds Max as source material and this is what we'll be working with for our tutorial today. Um, what you're looking at right now is the final result with glorious amounts of fur strands on them and you can see we've got a lot of nice secondary motion um, really accents the character and so we're going to take you from point A to point B with this today. The first thing that we need to do is talk a little bit about asset preparation and what you're going to need to do to be able to put fur on your model. The goal to put fur or hair onto your character is to get what's going to become the growth mesh down to a, a single mesh and you want one material on it. We don't handle multiple materials. So you want a single mesh for your, your growth mesh for fur because this is going to have this is going to cover the entire body of the character. However, areas that do not need fur, such as bone areas like the tusks or the teeth, or areas that have high detail where it's not needed, such as the eye sockets and the inside of the mouth, you can either approach this two ways. You can remove them, or you can just water them down to the point where they're the same poly density as the rest of the model. Speaking of poly density, um, because HairWorks takes the hair guides and interpolates new hairs between them, you want to try and go for as uniform a poly density as possible. This makes a lot of sense not only from the HairWorks perspective of making the fur look uniformly dense, but it also helps your sanity a little bit while you're grooming. So if we look at this character and we go into Vine Pose, this is our graphics mesh. And as stated earlier, we've got a lot of detail in the eyes and we've got a lot of detail in the mouth. This particular model was built with the teeth and the tusks as separate models and that's great, that works out well for us so we don't have to deal with those areas. Now if I go and I unhide the growth mesh, which is our slimmed down version, you can see what I've done here is stitched the eye socket together in lower detail and I've gone ahead and removed the tongue and some other areas. Now for this particular model uh, I don't need the mouth cavity. Not only is there not going to be fur in there but I'm not concerned with any sort of um, shadow casting or anything like that in that area. The growth mesh is also used to help with the shadow calculations for hair and as a surface to reference for, for shadows. So I'm going to unlock this growth mesh and I'm going to move it over to the side so we can compare it to the graphics mesh. We'll turn the graphics mesh back on and we'll do a wireframe overlay. Oop. There we go. So you can see, especially with the eyes, how I've approached the growth mesh here. We're just stitched together, a lot less detail, less going on in the mouth. And if we compare the necks as well, you can see we've removed some of the detail and kind of streamlined the mesh a little bit. Now when you go to skin the growth mesh back to the skeleton, you want to have the same number of joints or bones and skinning envelopes from your graphics mesh to your growth mesh so that everything kind of stays synced up and your surfaces stay close together. The other thing to note is your surface does not have to be watertight. However, there is implications for shadows as mentioned earlier. If you do have um, holes in places that you're not planning for, then you might get a hole in your shadow. So be conscious of that. And what we're shooting for, not only is a single mesh, is that we have a guide curve per vertex. Um, you don't need to have a guide curve 
on a vertex, but you can only have a maximum of one guide curve per vertex. And using shave and a haircut from Maya is going to naturally provide that for us. However, if you wanted to create your guide curves in a different way, you would need to meet this requirement. It's also worth noting that your graphics mesh can also double as the growth mesh. So if I put my growth mesh back at zero and I go ahead and hide it, it is completely feasible. This character is already made up of one material and, and this single mesh. I could actually put fur onto this mesh. The reason why I don't is because I've got a lot of detail in areas that I don't necessarily need it. There's extra spans in the neck, there's extra spans in, in the elbow and in the, uh, the, the wrist and ankles. And then there's all this extra detail in the face. And during the grooming process, this just takes a, a lot more time to water those areas down. And it's a, you're sending a lot more vertices and polys through the fur, line, the fur pipeline than you really need to be doing. So whatever you can eliminate, it's, uh, it, it's best to go ahead and do that. For Maya, we use the one of the standards in visual effects, shave and a haircut, which is a third-party solution. And we strictly use it for grooming and then export the curves to Hairworks. The basic rundown of how this works is like this. So we're going to go ahead and hide our graphics mesh, because we don't really need to look at it right now. And let's just look at our growth mesh that we've prepared. I'm going to go ahead and take off the wireframe overlay as well as my wireframe preview so we can just look at the mesh. And I'm going to go up to the shave menu and create new hair. And it gives us a little dialog like this. And we're not using any of the rendering features from Shave and Haircut, so it really doesn't matter what preset you pick. We'll go ahead and pick Scruffy. and it's going to go ahead and make a bunch of hairs. So the first thing that we want to do is turn off the hair rendering because again we don't really need that but what we do need is the display guides. So we'll do that and we'll go to our shave menu and turn off the hair. So we end up something like this. So as you can see we've got a lot of, a lot of guide curves to deal with. One of the other things that we can do that's going to help out the pipeline is, because we know this is going to be short fur, we can turn our segments down to something manageable like five, or even four. And this is how many knots or CVs are on a given strand. What we want to do is go ahead and attenuate the hair, and that's going to go ahead and set the furs up how it thinks the length should be right out of the gate. And as you can see here, even though we've gone in with our growth mesh and removed areas, such as stitching the eyes together and removing the mouth cavity. We've still got a lot of fur in places that we're pr probably not going to want fur. So what we do is we go over to our styling brush and we're just going to scale down areas that, that we don't want. So I'm just going to scale those all the way down to zero until there's nothing left. Likewise, you can also use the cut brush However, the cut brush doesn't completely remove the curve, so you'll still be left with some interpolation. So when you scale these down to zero, when it gets in the hair works, there's not going to be any interpolation between curves around the nose or, in this case, around the mouth because there's no curve there. And a requirement of the curves is that for every vertex on the growth mesh, you can only have a maximum of one guide curve. So you can't have something like two guide curves per vertex, which shaving a haircut won't produce anyway, but in the event you ended up with that, you, hair works will not read that properly. So we'll just do a little bit more basic grooming. And get stuff off of the feet make my brush a little bit bigger and this is using standard Maya artisan shortcuts B for brush size makes things nice and fast and familiar and then what we'll we'll do is go in and and we'll start moving the direction of the furs a little bit 
So I've changed my translate brush, and we're just going to start shaping things a little bit. You can also use the growth mesh or the high fidelity graphics mesh as a collision mesh. So you can see here I'm pulling these a little bit and they're kind of coming through the mesh. I can set that up as collision so that doesn't happen. And you would do that through edit current. So what I'll do is select my growth mesh with control and edit current update collision mesh. Of course now I want to put my character back in the bind pose. So we'll just go over to here. And there we go. Select my curves and go right back to grooming. And you can see now when I pull the curves they're they're right on the um right on the character. And then what we can do, you can also do a comb. And a comb is going to do uh, its kind of best effort to get the hairs where it thinks they need to be. Now, with Hairworks, since Hairworks doesn't have a, a real time collision with the mesh, we do have backstop, which gives you a reasonable um, kind of approximation of what that mesh is. And that functions a lot like clothing does. It's just using a sphere and pushing it down to, into the mesh and making a wall of spheres to approximate that collision. But what we want to do to kind of help it on its way along with high deformation is you want to go to the root stand up puff hairs out and you just kind of want to puff the roots up a little bit so you're looking for something a little bit more like this and now when it when it simulates in hair works you can set it to where it falls closer to the mesh but you want its starting position to be a little bit off the mesh you don't want it hugging the mesh really close And in the case of the main back here, I just want to stand them up all together. And same for my tail. I want that to be a little bit bigger. Now I've already got a series of guide curves that I've created and I can use as a comb. So I'm going to go into shave and I want to control sec select my comb, which is just a, a group of curves. You see here just a lot of curves. I say edit current and I can say comb using curves. So what that's going to do is groom the length and shape of all the curves on the character based on what my, my comb already is. So this is what our final groom looks like with our character. So you can see the head is nice and absent of furs and we, we move from a short fur to a long fur. Um, typical of lions and wolves, which is what we were kind of referencing with this character. We want the, the mane to stick up really high and we want a big um, big puff of fur on the chin and the collar down here where the, the mane kind of slides down. It's a lot shorter on the rib cage and the belly so we can have some of the skin show through and a, a telltale sign of a lion, uh, of the lion influence for this character is we've got the uh, big puff at the end of the tail. So this is the end of what we need for, for shaving a haircut. So what we want to do is transfer this to a series of, of curves that Hairworks can use. So what we'll do is select our shave node and then edit current and convert guides to curves. And that setting we used for knots per per span is going to be used in this conversion process as well. So we'll get, you know, four or five CVs per per curve, which is good for short fur. And so now I've got my my group of curves. So each curve corresponds to one vertex on the growth mesh. Um, just to keep my scene organized, I'm going to go ahead and call this hair guides. Oops, let me fix that. Okay, now what we want to do is set up our Hairworks node onto our growth mesh so we can export this out to a game engine or the Hairworks viewer. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off X-ray joints and we'll reselect my growth mesh. And then we're just going to go up to the Hairworks menu and say create Hairworks. And this will add a small little 
node over here to our growth mesh. And so there's not a lot to this, it's just a little general section and we have our pick guides uh, which will allow us to pick a group of curves that represents our guides, all these blue curves here. And then the wrench will just take us to a uh, menu if you didn't have your outline or showing or something like that and you could, you could pick it that way. So let's go ahead and do that. And those are now picked, hair guides. And then we've also got resample guides, and this is for um, export. So this is going to resample the number of CVs or knots that are in each curve. And for fur, you're typically looking at three to three to six is a good place to be resampling. Any more than that, and it's just it's too much. It's it's a little ridiculous. You don't really see the detail. And then for three is just if you've got really short fur and it's not going to move a whole lot, then three might be okay. Now, the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and export our stuff. So the first thing we'll do is export uh, the FBX. So the FBX file will represent the skeletal mesh in the Hairworks viewer, and you're only going to use the FBX file to see your fur in context to the entire character and you can put materials on it and such and we'll go over that in more detail in the hair work section but ultimately it allows you to iterate on your character in, in context like you would in a game engine so we'll go ahead and go to export and And the things that we want are smoothing groups, tangents, and binormals. You want to export your animation, bake it down if you need to. You want to make sure your scale factor, your scene unit, is where you want it. Most of the time we're in centimeters, so I'm going to go ahead and keep it there. I'm working in Y up, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it at Y up. And then I can go ahead and export. The next thing that we want to do is export our HairWorks file. And our HairWorks file is a APX or APB file, which is very similar to the clothing files and they're laid out very similar. So we'll go to export. And for our file type, we'll go down and choose HairWorks. one demo and you can see you can set your export scale to match your your FBX or your game engine and then you can also choose between APX and APB and in this case we're going to be an APX and then after that we can go ahead and close down Maya and we can go into the HairWorks viewer and start to assemble our character and tune all of the interesting attributes such as waviness and clumping and density and work on our control maps.